the 2016 presidential election. As they always are, it is dramatic, with anecdotal conflagrations thrust like so many mortars through the air. To truly understand an election as a function of a society that dares to assume it chooses its leaders is to ask how to understand the people composing its culture. The culture of today is one that lacks inconsistency, an ever-changing status quo of micro-diversions, peppered with half-truths, appeals to various forms of impassioned anger and willful ignorance. All poetic ramblings aside, let us examine the state of the modern individual in America today. We'll look at a few quick common sense arguments, avoiding the specifics of issues present in the election that would require their own videos, and after focusing on the atmosphere of political discussion, we'll see footage from my own visit to the campus which hosted the first debate today, September the 26th. When examining the world of political debate, one thing should become clear, preceding any opinions, ideas, or even statistics, and that is that we, as an umbrella term for the most common people, are not politicians. This would potentially lead one to ask, what is it that distinguishes any man from a politician? And while I think that this is a good question to ask, one that lies in discussing the merits of competency and the accessibility of public office, see meritocracy, it detracts from the larger picture I'm trying to paint by discussing participation in uninformed outsider debate and the exchange of ideas. If you're scratching your head right now, think of it this way. We're all, for the most part, ignorant of what really goes on behind the closed doors of the Capitol. And I do mean what really goes on. Sure, Netflix series House of Cards isn't a shot-for-shot -shot depiction of the real political world, but sometimes in art we are fortunate enough to see a mix of creative storytelling blended seamlessly with enough aspects of the real world and its functions such that for many it would be hard to ultimately dismiss the series as either absolutely realistic and honest or absolutely dramatic and deceitful. I don't want to base my point entirely around a show like House of Cards because it is just that, a show, a drama at that, and I'm only on season 3 so no spoilers. For those of you who haven't seen it, it is essentially the story of corrupt politician Frank Underwood as he climbs through the ranks of political power from Congress to the presidency. Though it mirrors the present state of reality, or sometimes its conceivable future, it does so in a way that creates conflict as per its medium demands. However, going off of this idea, we as a common people, most of which have no connection to anyone with influence and supposed authority of the chain of command we would all call important, have any real business making scathing remarks about pretty much any politician or political system. Herein lies the problem, not just in the 2016 election, but in many forms of government, conceptually speaking, that in order for all peoples to be informed enough to make accurate jabs at the man, they must be trained in a law system that undermines all politics. Many people know laws as they might apply to them. For example, the seasoned robber likely knows a bit about the penalties considering his unfortunate capture, the illegal arms dealer of the repercussions of selling unmarked firearms, and the CEO cooking books of the punishments for laundering money, so on and so forth. But many people do not understand the law on any more meaningful a basis, save for those who are designated to study it and ultimately help craft it. Many people, if asked, would likely be okay with this kind of dividing of responsibility, as one man can't be expected to do all things perfectly. However, I would argue that this kind of knowledge is not only essential, but integral to being average citizens, even to those who work in things like construction, in, in porno, porno video retail, in, in casinos, or anything. And it makes sense, knowing the law makes you a better citizen in a culture and government that supposes to work off that law. People just don't have the time or resources to devote to understanding the law accurately or meaningfully, and of course, as all things typically do, this branches out into a slew of other questions. For example, what is it people really care about spending said time and resources on? How much of the law do they really comprehend? How many people willingly break the law or ignore it as they feel it doesn't apply to them, and why? I could go on asking questions, but I want to actually answer some myself. When we consider candidates, no matter their origin, we consider them based on their perceived competency. The problem is just that, they are perceptions, and they are subjective. 
There are multiple ways to objectively fix, for instance, the state of the U.S. economy. But the subjectivity rules out over the would-be obvious notion that there are several different options like redistributions of wealth or changes in budgets or taxes that would ultimately serve the economic policies positively. This brings us to the infamous term identity politics. People have a kind of selective hearing bias when it comes to seeking out new information and associations, and this plays into the idea that politics, and an increasingly narcissistic, arguably entitled populace of people seeking instant gratification and validation, is more a battle of individuals against other individuals than it is of candidates against other prospective candidates. This is not exclusive to the 2016 election again, but it is certainly one of its most noticeable traits. The internet, then, serves as a tool to extend the identity one creates for themselves into the larger pool of ideas and other selves, creating a rash environment where people are quick to jump to the defense of their selves even if the self is not in question. The media knows this, and they take full advantage of it, spinning what could more or less be looked at as objective facts or otherwise harmless soundbites and quotes, isolating them so that their application can be used to strike at the self. One of the major tenets in journalism is relevancy. How do the stories apply to people, and why? Generally, this would be used to create personal interest. However, especially in the age of the internet, it's used to grab a cheap, quick, and hostile response out of people who oppose the headline's implications. It's simple psychology. Us versus them. And it's not any kind of feasible political foundation, as typically, the us does not seek to understand the them, nor is the opposite true. The goal is, quote-unquote, victory, whether it's the last or harshest word in an online argument or the controlling majority of public institutions. People have not quite shed their lust for power through aggressive tactics, even in today's largely lax world of digital screens. When looking at articles, watching interviews, and absorbing media, even something like this, ask yourself who the speaker, writer, and or institution is. One of the key logical grievances I have, personally, with this current election is hypocrisy. People have always condemned politicians for flip-flopping, but consider two quick examples to paint a broader portrait. Hillary parroting ideas Sanders mentioned just months before her nomination, ones she'd previously expressed disagreement towards, suddenly being met with cheer and applause. Another good example are in the cases of things like Trump's tax returns, Hillary's emails, or Obama's birth certificate. On both sides, you see people jeering or cheering at the idea of Trump's tax returns being released, alternatively, of Hillary's emails being released or examined closer. This demonstrates the ease with which the lens of bias shifts the narrative, and this is all turned up to 11 by the media at large. Hypocrisy undermines the conviction people have in one idea, since the consistency of their beliefs or belief can be brought to light when applying the same concept elsewhere. If it sounds like I'm going somewhere relatively neutral with all this, it's because mostly, I am. This video isn't about discussing my personal preferences, because they change. And they change because I know that I'm politically ignorant, not for lack of trying not to be. As we average citizens read books, we inform ourselves on the intended processes of civil government. But the reality is closer to what I bought it before by mentioning House of Cards. The truth is that the truth is often stranger than fiction. Like the egg-chicken debacle, one ponders the nature of art imitating or influencing life, or vice versa. The truth is that the reality of politics starts with the things so many of us, those not studying law, read as fact, then continues with real life, chaos, corruption, personal agendas, and people saying or doing things for reasons we couldn't hope to understand that they'll likely take to the grave. Intentions, secrets, manipulations, and a laundry list of other undesirable yet undeniably human behaviors dominate. Because of this, and an admitted penchant for many of the tenets of anarchy and its subsystems, I cannot ultimately hope to convince you that any one side holds the answer more so than another. I can tell you, to deviate from objectivity and the philosophical for a moment, that in this current campaign the left is especially active in spreading disinformation and attempting to control emotional appeal, but it wouldn't matter in contrast to the larger point I'm trying to make with this video, which without me rambling on for another four to five pages of script, can be summed up in the following. This election year is in so many ways no different than the past. The bias of young generations used to absorbing information on a vast scale drives their entrance into a world sculpted for them by generations past in a world arguably disconnected through history. We essentially see more of the same, 
more of the distrust of others, more of the identity associations, more of the arguing, more of the ignorance of people who know not, nor ever will, the real world of politics. We see more of the same. The surprising thing, particularly almost my reason for making this video, is the way people react to this idea. For so many, it's a shock to see the magnitude of what is more or less regular political behavior increase. Many are bamboozled by the hostility exhibited by people who yell, fight, and object to things they couldn't hope to fully understand. It's a symptom of the rising tension of our modern political atmosphere that so many people could be surprised at what's become so stale yet so pungent. I'll likely make more videos that address different specific aspects of the election, the outcome, so on and so forth, but for now, remember that it's all as simple as saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Oh, oh, we're on. Hi there, I'm Dusk Legend, and uh, we're on our way out to the uh, the Hofstra University 2016 Donald Trump Hillary Clinton presidential debate. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna ask the people around there some kind of questions. We're we're gonna see what's going down in the local Long Island political scene. So join me on a, man, a, a fantastic magical journey of political discovery as we uh, talk to people and make fun of their opinions because they're wrong. Hi, I'm Dusk Legend. I shouldn't have bought this water bottle because this is a pain in the ass, dude. I mean, I gotta fucking like, carry this everywhere. We've seen a lot of interesting stuff so far, a lot of signs. It's kind of like Mardi Gras, except a lot more depressing. Uh, and apparently, the overflow room we're designated to is in the irrelevant part of the campus. They said, you know what, fuck you guys, you get in the corner over there. So, that's where we're headed. I'm trying to navigate, you watch out, you got, you got a little backwards action going on here. This is a professional operation going on here, obviously. Have a, a you know a talking camera that'd be too expensive and uh, we're low budget. So let me ask you guys just a couple of questions. So you guys are younger, right? Now you haven't really had the chance so far to uh, participate in any traditional you know election to follow the culture, right? Maybe one or two, right? Yeah. So just as being fresh into the world of politics, what is the most outstanding quality that you've noticed both online and off about this election? Uh, the obsession with the millennial vote as separated from any other vote. Uh, talking about hashtags. Oh, uh, you know. Yeah, these millennials, they, they hashtag their politics. And they do this. What, what do millennials want? And it's like, uh, I don't know, to be able to eat a sandwich? Probably the worst feature of this, uh, of this election was just sort of the extremism and just the extremism and in politics is never, never the right answer. Extremism is just never the answer. And I think that we've seen too much of that on both sides in this election. What do you think, what's the most defining thing? Of course, it's a helicopter when I go to do this, right? But uh, what is the most defining thing about this election? You like, what, like the people themselves? What do you notice the most? I feel like it's more of a spectacle, more of a show than about politics, and I don't think that that's right. A little video, nothing too serious. Just oh. kidding. I'm with the Washington Post now. Oh, are you thorough? <laughs> <laughs> come on. Come so, on. who are you guys vote for and what? I vote for Hillary Clinton because she's the most qualified person to run for president. I saw the shirt. I just had to ask anyone. For that. <laughs> um, Hillary Clinton because I don't really want to split the vote, and I hate. I agree. She's not, you know, she's trying to be all smiley and like, I am relatable. You're not relatable. You're Hillary Clinton. You've been in the public eye for 25 goddamn years and you were the wife of a president and secretary of state. You're nothing like me and I'm glad. I'm voting for Hillary, definitely. I'm leaning yes. towards Hillary. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Jeff Bush, just because I feel sad for him. <laughs> uh, we found the meme crowd. There we go. That's our demographic. You're right. We, uh, I mean, my, my whole thing okay. is, what's the difference so between Jeb Bush like, and a plane crash? Uh, Jeb Bush doesn't even get off the ground. Um, and they make themselves in yeah. What kind of, what kind of clip? Are we getting, are we getting a, all right. Hillary Trump. Because I don't like Donald Trump. Whoa, dude, how are you guys not like... Because you can still be friends and have different political views. That's yeah, a good life yeah. lesson right there. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the fence, honestly. Uh, I yeah. think I might vote for Berman Supreme. I, I think no. his bias is a little right. evident there. <laughs> but it's all good. That's the only sensible choice, guys. Come on, dude. If you're not voting for memes, you're not voting for anything other than disaster. Street, and you got the chance to talk to them? What would you say? I'm talking right out to you. Oh, come on, Bob. What would I say?
Let's find out what the interpretive art uh, party is uh, is doing this uh, election. <laughs> Fucking liberals. Look at us happen behind you. Look at us happen behind you. <laughs> Nonsense Humor Magazine. LOL. Nonsense Humor Magazine. Backslash. Issue. Look up Nonsense Humor. We're the second one after like absurdism on Wikipedia. Got the HTTP colon colon. We thought it'd be really lame out here, but nah, dude, we got titties already, man. We got titties already. How do you think both candidates like their eggs? That's what we're interested. In. That's what we really. I need feel to like know. Donald is a is a hard boiled. He's yeah, a hard ass. The second person who said that, man. All right. Um. And Hillary. She's I think she goes. I think she does the one where you cut it and then it like dribbles out. Runny? 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 Yeah, that, see, I knew it, called it. Alright, yeah. yeah, you know what, literally, that's it. We're done, we're done. Wrap it. Probably scrambled. Hard-boiled, <laughs> tiny, <laughs> like his real balls. Trump probably likes it raw. Uh, Hillary probably likes it extremely well done. Like wow. to the point where it's like a leather bag. Those probably. are two of the kinkiest answers we've gotten all night. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we only got one question for you, my man. Sure, and it's sure, the most sure. important question. Oh, yeah. How do you, how do you think the can uh, candidates like, like their eggs? Uh, thrown at them. Fuck the police coming straight from the underground. A young nigga got it. I want to talk about branding. The fucking brand your name right into your fucking burger, dude. That's good. Let's see if Gary wants them. Come on, Gary. Lord, thank you. Thank you for gracing the front page of Omegle.com. Do you want to snip the boot? Yeah. I don't do you know. Want to look at the <laughs> right. How do you feel about me wanting to smell your boot? Well, that's okay. Some people have that fetish. Fuck the police coming straight from the underground. A young nigga got it. It smells like, I'm so smart. Yeah, wait, it smells like a boot and brain. Uh, Dusk Legend! Be sure to check out Dusk Legend. I'm very familiar with them. They're really good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Fuck the police coming straight from